Hey guys, it's Mr. Stark again. And the last video showed you an actual uh, motor control enclosure that came out of a business that had this float circuit in it. And what I want to show you now is the same float switch circuit that we actually built, uh, students actually built in the lab. And what we did is we hooked up a sink with a hose and the hose goes up into the tank and it's a little fish tank but if you look in there really close you're going to see those little brass uh, rods that come down into these white stems those are float switches and they're actually DC micro switches so we had to modify the circuit quite a bit to get it to work because we're using three different voltages we're using 120 volt AC 24 volt DC 24 volt AC all mixed into one enclosure so there's your four float switches, and you notice they're set at different heights. In the corner are two aquarium pumps to simulate 1M and 2M, the two pump motors that pump water out of the tank. And remember, 1M turns on to try to maintain uh, getting water out of there. And if it can't keep up with the water coming in, uh, pump motor two kicks on and tries to help eliminate some of that excessive water. And we put this up on a shelf, pretty cool. And then coming down out of the tank are these poly tubes that actually pump the water back out into the sink. So that's kind of what you're looking at. So whatever water we put in, we take out. And this is an old Allen Bradley cover that's actually on the enclosure. The circuit has been modified and it's been modified to suit the needs of the different control voltages that I have inside. So same circuit, just modified to make to make it work the way we need it to work. And that's what we do in motor controls. We take circuits and we gotta modify them or fix things in the field. So I'm gonna raise myself up to the enclosure. In here, we actually have, very similar to the other enclosure, we have a motor starter number one, motor starter number two. We've got a couple of control relays. We've got three rib relays, you might remember from semiconductors, I tore one of those apart. We've got a 24 volt AC transformer. 24 volt DC uh, power supply, and I need that for the micro switches. We have an indicator light for pump motor one. When pump motor one comes on, we've got an indicator light for pump number two. We've got a horn and an alarm light at the very top and a reset button to silence the horn, just like the circuit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flood this tank. So I'm gonna turn this water on and I'm trying to get this circuit to go fast so we're not sitting here watching the video. So I'm actually intentionally flooding this as fast as I can. And you're gonna to start to see the water level rise. And as this water level rises, remember flow switch one simply brings power to flow switch number two. And it's also acting as a uh, final float switch to eliminate all the water. So right now float switch number two is activated. It's pumping water out, the indicator light's on, the contactor's pulled in. So you can see it's trying to pump out water. An aquarium pump is not going to do all the job it needs to do, it's just to simulate. So now we got double the water flow. Pump number two is pumping away. And pretty soon the alarm's going to go off because I got this thing maxed out. And both pumps are working hard to try to get rid of this water. Obviously it's not going to get rid of the water. I silence the horn, the alarm light is on. I'm gonna turn off this water because they're only aquarium pumps, so they're not gonna be able to maintain that type of flow. I sped it up so that you can see how it works. Right now, you can see all the water that's in the tank. These float switches are waiting to be turned off. What's gonna happen, this is gonna pump an auto all the way down until there's no more water left in the tank. The warning light went away. So that let us know that we're beyond that fourth float switch. So that's a good thing. The aquarium pumps are still on. These contactors are actually pulled in right now. You can see that one's all pulled in. They're pumping away. This is actually a three phase motor starter, but we put single phase into it because my aquarium pumps are only 120 volts. And you can see all the wiring that's involved. On the previous video, you saw uh, A1 and A2, normally open, normally closed. This is a different type of motor starter. So we stand here for a little bit. 
You can also see that my rib relays are pulled in. I'm using these to isolate my, uh, my DC power supply. I'm using another rib relay to isolate my 24 volt power supply. Once you mix voltages, you need relays to kind of counteract because they all can't bump into each other, the voltages. You can see the aquarium pumps are really doing a good job. They're, they're pumping away as good as they can. Right now, float number one, float number two, float number three, you can see right now it's close to being able to drop that out. It's pumping. I'm going to let you sit here for a little bit because you can see how this will go off automatically. I think the impressive part about this circuit is we mimicked something in the field and we made it work with real life miniature parts so that you can see it work in person. Right now that water level is almost dropped below that float, so close. And any second, you can see that getting to the point of no return. Now I've got this in fail safe mode and what that means is uh, both pumps are going to run and pump all the water out of the tank. And the reason why I got it in fail safe mode is just in case one pump maybe shit the bed, you're going to want to make sure you get rid of the water so the other one will make sure it gets rid of the rest of the water if one should fail. So we could sit here all day and wait for it to turn off, but you can get the point. Once it gets below uh, the first float switch, everything's going to turn off. She's doing a fine job. So this is an absolute example of the automatic circuit that we talked about in the PowerPoint. When this thing's just sitting here ready to go, if we got water, this thing's going to take care of itself. And that's what you want. You don't want to have to be able to stand around and wait for somebody to turn something on. It might be too late. So walk that through the circuit one more time. Float switch one. Brought power to float switch two. Too much water, close that switch, pump motor one came on. Pump motor one can't maintain getting rid of all that water that fast because there's too much coming in. Float switch three got activated, allowing pump motor two to come on. Float switch four says, hey, we got way too much water coming in. One pump and two pump can't maintain all this flood that's coming in. So what happens is that closes, sending power to the buzzer, the warning light, and then you could reset. And you can see that we just went beyond that second float. So now this thing has turned off. Both indicator lights are off. Both motor starters are turned off. And the rest of the water that's in here is just uh, loot coming out as a result of gravity. Pretty cool. So you'll be wiring this up in lab and simulating it with different types of devices. See you at the next video.